Well, hello guys, Mr. G here with another video and this time for the Cray 10. We're going to be doing questions, two questions only, on longitudinal wave and sound, okay? So, um, and this is the last video we're going to make on the topic, then we're going to do another topic. Now, the question one says a longitudinal wave move in the sil uh, slinky spring. On the moment... On the moment, show below position A and B as respectively the midpoint of the compression and rarefaction and is 24 centimeters apart. What is the wavelength of the wave? So the first thing we're going to check is to mark how many waves are represented here because the wavelength is for one wave. So from the center of the first compression from here to the center of the second compression, there will be one wavelength so this distance here represent one wavelength there i hope you can see it here that is one wavelength from the center of that compression to the center of the next compression is another wavelength so this distance here is another wavelength okay so we have so far two wavelengths or two waves okay and then if we go from here to there but it's not ending it's just ending there so from here to there will be another wavelength but you can see the 24 centimeter stops just behind that one there okay so, so how many wavelengths are represented there there are 2,5 wave and then to solve this one we are going to do, to do it in the way we did always okay we have the 2,5 wave uh, cover a distance or half a distance of 224 centimeters so we say 2,5 cover or half a distance let's write the word wave here just for you not to get confused wave have a distance of 24 centimeters I want to know one wave what will the distance be because that is a wavelength it's for one wave and you do cross product here okay so we're going to do it here down now clean so here we are and now we do the cross product here therefore we're going to have 2,5 x equal to 1 multiplied by 24 centimeters note we're working in centimeters so this x is going to be equal to 24 divided by 2,5 Okay, so the answer here is 9,6, 9,6 centimeters. Now, if you want to convert to meters, now if you want to convert to meters, then you have to get that answer and divide by 100 to convert to meters. Okay, so wavelength here will be equal to 9,6 centimeters divided by 100 and will be equal to 0 0.096 meters i don't think it's a need because the question doesn't ask you to to give it in meters but the si unit of wavelengths is the meter so we never know but you can convert it it's quite simple so that was the first question it's very simple guys okay now it takes 1.5 seconds for a compression to move from a to b so now we're going to do exactly the same but to calculate period because period is needed for the speed and also is needed for the frequency however there are other ways of calculating speed so in actual fact let's calculate what we have and let's see the data let's see the data 1.2.1 data okay now we have in the data we have in the data that the distance cover distance cover is 24 centimeters it's telling you that cover a distance of 24 centimeters in so much time in 1.5 seconds so the time here is going to be um, 1.5 seconds 1.5 seconds Okay, now the distance, remember, we're going to work in meters. So when you convert here, you have 0, 
24 meters and then we have the wavelength we have the wavelength it may not be used but we have it it is equal to 0, 0.096 meters and we're looking for um speed of the wave now the speed of the wave the formula of speed by definition speed is equal to distance divided by time there are other formulas but we have this one here the distance is given 0 comma 24 and the time is 1,5 so if you substitute there you will be able to calculate the speed which is going to be 0 comma 0.16 meters per second so this is the answer of the question so we didn't have to calculate period however it's very easy to calculate the period so in case somebody want to calculate it you can say that 2,5 wave takes 1,5 seconds so one wave how long will it take that that will be the period and you do cross product again so you have 2,5 x equal to 1,5 and when x is equal to 1,5 divided by 2,5 that will give you the period so x which is in actual fact the period of the wave will be equal to 3,75 and when you calculate you get that the period is going to be equal to 0, 0,6 second and now the period is not is not the answer the answer is the speed but speed remember guys you don't have to do this this is just another option okay so speed is equal to wavelength divided by period the wavelength is going to be 0, 0,096 divided by the period which is 0, 0,6 you will get equal to 0, 0,16 meters per second you can see is the same is the same as the okay it's just another option it's in case somebody want to calculate the period and it's a good practice with this thing here of the cross product there okay so now that's it and now the next question is calculate the frequency of the wave now according to the data we have the speed we have the wavelengths and this is question 1.2.2 okay we have speed and we have wavelength i'm not going to write the data again and all we have to do is to use the formula speed is equal to to frequency multiplied by wavelength and if you substitute here the speed was 0, 0.16 0, 0.16 the frequency you are looking for the frequency and the wavelength was uh, 0, 0.096 so frequency when you rearrange this one frequency will be equal to 0, 0.16 divided by 0, 0.096 that is going to be the frequency here and you will get that the frequency is equal to 1.67 hertz okay okay guys and this is the first question it's quite simple the first question is, is quite very very simple and it's the same work as longitudinal wave just apply it to lo the, it's the same way as transverse wave just apply it to longitudinal wave so let's go to the next question so question two is here two nodes p and q have the same frequency but the amplitude of p is twice that of q draw this sketch of p and q to show the wave pattern on each node as it appears in the oscilloscope now i want you to notice the following the oscilloscope will show a wave pattern okay so you won't see a wave of sound here represented with lines or anything like that you will see it re represented with a um with a wave that will look like a, an ox, um, oscillation there okay so it is a little bit tricky because you don't see a, an oscilloscope i'll try to do an experiment sometime with an oscilloscope of sound so you can see it how it appear how does the pattern as appear but all you have to do is to draw an oscillation sine or cosine in a, of these nodes p and q so let, let's let's do here now what they want to see the pattern the pattern and they are telling you that the um, node p we're going to represent here p and we're going to represent here node q here node q 
So you need to know that the pattern have the same frequency. So um, we are going to represent just one way for each of them. Okay, so for P, for example, will be starting from here, going all the way down, all the way down, and it's going to end, and um, let's fix this side here, all the way to there, and it's going there. So this one is going to be P. All right, remember, this is not the longitudinal way, this is the part and C in an oscilloscope of a sound wave. So it's not longitudinal wave, it just represent, this doesn't represent the motion of the particles, okay? This represents the, ox uh, the oscillation, okay? It's a little bit tricky, but we'll talk about that. So later on, I'll try to set up an experiment so you can actually see it. Now, Node Q have the same frequency, but have the amplitude. So Node Q will start from here, but will the amplitude be only halfway? So only halfway of that one will go all the way down and will stop there. So this one will be Node Q. Half the amplitude, same frequency, okay? So this is the pattern they wanted to see. And that one would be question 2.1, guys. Question 2.1, that is the pattern they want to see. It's not the big, it's not the big issue. It's confusing because of the word oscilloscope and we'll, I'll, I'll promise I'll show you something like that. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Next question say compare the pitch and loudness of the two nodes. Now pitch and loudness, we're going to do that question here. Now the pitch, remember, have to do with the frequency and they have the same frequency, therefore they have the same, the same pitch. Same frequency, same pitch. Now what about loudness? Now, what about the loudness? P have a double amplitude. Remember, loudness is related to amplitude. So, if P have double amplitude, it will have double or two eyes, twice the loud of Q. Okay? So, P will be twice as loud as Q. It is not difficult because loudness is related to amplitude. Okay, so that is that question. And then we're going to finish. There is almost done. Uh, note P now become louder and louder. Uh, state what will happen to each of the following. Write down only increase, decrease, or remain the same. And this is quite simple. If you increase the loudness or it become louder, wavelength, what will happen? It will nothing happen. It will stay the same because a wavelength have nothing to do with the uh, loudness of the wave okay frequency well it remains the same why because frequency have to do with pitch pitch is the one that affects the frequency or it, it is the same as frequency in sound wave and amplitude will get bigger this one will be bigger because loudness have to do with amplitude okay and this is the question that we are done this is all for now we saw two questions related to a um, longitudinal wave and sound i hope it helped so please write messages uh, you can suggest a video if you want to to make a specific video uh, but for now that's all thank you for watching i'll see you next time subscribe for the channel time up mr g here